Thanks so much, Warren. And just a shout out to Warren and to uh, Carol for all their hard work in helping us run such successful Tad Hack Chicago's for all those years. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to ask if uh, Will can come on down and get yourself set up. Uh, his partner uh, for the hack, Dei Chen, she's hiding in the audience. So this is going to be like a Where's Waldo? So it's up to you to try and find out where his uh, partner is hiding. <laughs> what I'll just preface this is Will turned up at uh, Tad Hack at, what was it, 12.30? Uh, on Sunday. And said, oh, I'm here for the hackathon. And we're like, okay, you do realize the pitches start at 2 p.m. Yeah, okay. Now, we did put him at the end, so he had a little bit more time to uh, get everything wrapped up. But I think this is a great demonstration of the power of the platforms uh, that have been created. So he hacked on VoIP Innovations, and in just a couple of hours, he was able to get his hack working. So with that, I'll hand over to Will. Do you want to use this, or do you want to use the handheld? Okay, over to you, Will. Hi, uh, my name is Will Brickner. Let me get my thing set up here. Um, having some issues, okay. All right, so this is my first time doing it. Okay, so a little bit about me. My name is Will Brickner. Um, I'm really interested in math, physics, computer science. Um, this is uh, like a particle simulation I wrote uh, a few years ago. Um, basically, like all points tug on other points, you know, kind of like. Uh, Super, super beautiful patterns emerge from really simple rules, right? I think that's something that I think is um, super fascinating, right? Um, I, I kind of work pretty heavily in the startup space. I have this one startup called 3D Snapshot. Uh, it's basically like 15 different cameras on an arc that'll take a picture all at the same time, and then you can turn that into an animation dynamically. And then you, it's for like an event product. It's pretty, it's kind of fun to, uh, to operate. Um, designed and built the whole thing, wrote all the software, right? Um, so also I do like uh, open source, um, open source software, right, so different small projects ranging kind of from genomics utilities to image processing libraries. Um, I'm right now I'm working on like a novel um, kind of neural network architectures uh, with like exciting applications in, mach in machine learning um, that is kind of like a, a different paradigm than what exists currently. Um, and I also in my free time will build uh, tech stacks for startups, which I've done uh, several times, right. Um, so there's also some more computational art and some physical simulations uh, that I've, you know, created in, in the last couple of years that I think are really interesting. Um, there, you know, this one is like a, a five-dimensional structure generated by an uh, iterative complex function. Um, that it, so it exists in five-dimensional space and you can interpolate around in the space and project it into two dimensions and that's what you see before you, right, is that, that projection. Which seems to animate in these beautiful ways, but that's just a quirk of the way that you're moving around the two-dimensional plane in the five-dimensional space. And there's some more kind of interesting geometric patterns that you can generate that are like nice to look at, but there's nothing really interesting going on there. Um, this is a, an interesting uh, art piece that I did uh, for, um, just for fun. It's like a, uh, 60,000 uh, New York Times front pages, um, all in uh, two minutes. Uh, I, sc I scraped the web store for New York Times and put them all together. It's really interesting. You can see like transition to color. You can see where they digitalize stuff. Everything becomes perfectly standard and rigid and never moves. Um, so yeah, I mean, it should be pretty clear by now that I'm a genius. <laughs> I hope it's clear to you as it is to me. Sometimes when I'm explaining something technical, I begin to glow and levitate. Space distorts around me. Uh, and yet it's a curse. I work really hard on a project and it seems no one in my life understands why it's so fascinating and why it's so cool, right? So how can I find others like me? Where in the world can I find arrogant men in tech who are too smart to communicate with normal humans? I wonder. So now I turn to you, the audience. Are you a misunderstood genius? Are you to your coworkers as a human being is to a dog? Does nobody understand your terrifying genius? Are they all just jealous of your boundless intellect? Is that you? So anyway, I hope you are, because I've invented the final solution recently at Tad Hack, uh, Hackathon, and I present it to you. It's Tech Buddy. You talk to other geniuses for free. You say, what? I don't understand. So, okay, so you call the Tech Buddy Genius Hotline, and you get matched with a hot single genius releasing your technical stress. 
So more on the network topology, because as we're all geniuses, this is what we're interested in. Um, so you can see, let me, let me find my laser pointer. You can see over here, you have the geniuses, and they communicate with some mysterious intermediate piece of infrastructure that I don't understand. And then that in turn communicates with VoIP innovations or API days, which uh, in turn will forward me requests that correspond to calls and, and actions that occur within those calls. And then I can send back responses and that changes how the call proceeds, right? So it's kind of an interesting architecture. Um, it took me a little bit for me to wrap my head around it and the ways in which I'd have to do something because you always have to be responding to a request from a call, right? So maybe it kind of leads to these, this, these interesting things, but um, I believe you can implement anything that, um, any, any process that you'd like could be implemented this way. So it's, it's kind of an interesting um, uh, architecture, right? Um, and you say, okay, easy. So geniuses call in and I just match them together, right? And well, it gets a little more complicated, right? Because all your geniuses should have similar, all, all the geniuses that are paired together should have very similar skill levels. Otherwise, you know, it could lead to technical frustration, um, which is certainly kind of a, a, a bad experience, right? So, I mean, in this diagram here, you see that, that we have a bunch of geniuses, six of them, and these, these geniuses are paired because they have a skill level of three, these are paired because they have a skill level of four, and these are paired because they're close and they're the best match, right? You have seven and eight over here. Um, but, uh, you know, these kind of rolled in, you didn't know when these were gonna, when, when these were gonna arrive, right? So you say, okay, well, this is easy, but Again, not so easy, right? Because your calls are coming in at random times, your skill levels are random, they're probably normally distributed, but they're random, right? And you can't predict them. Um, and you also can't find a perfect match quickly, and long wait times may also cause technical frustration, or maybe users just hang up and no one uses your service, right? So you need to be able to quickly find matches even if they're not perfect, and you need a good kind of fair way to do that. Um, so I was thinking this sounds kind of familiar, right? This is exactly the problem that Uber has, right? So, or a very similar problem to what Uber has. When you call on Uber, uh, you, you, you say, hey, I'm here, uh, this is my rating, essentially, and I need a trip to, to this other place. And there are other, also drivers nearby, and there's, there's all of that data, right? And they need to match these two together. In the same way that I need to pair geniuses who have different skill levels, they need to pair drivers and riders who have different, um, uh, ratings on their app and also, but of course they have a much more complicated, harder job because they have to think about, well, where's this driver already headed? Can I, can I put them on the trip for this pool? So that's an, a nightmare, right? So thankfully this is a lot simpler and I could do this in a couple hours, right? Um, so my initial solution was just to say, you know, um, when, the, when the user first uh, connects, then assume we can find an exact match for a certain amount of time, right? For like 30 seconds, try to find an exact match and when new people come in, try to look, hey, are they an exact match for, for what I'm looking for, for that skill level? And if they are, put them together and you're done. You don't worry about them anymore, right? Um, but then after a certain amount of time, your standards drop. And you're like, okay, I don't care who I talk to, I just need to talk to somebody, otherwise I'm gonna hang up the phone, right? So then you, you try to identify a close match um, in this way. And you look for who is cl absolutely closest to me out of all of the people, but this doesn't really pay attention to uh, how long people have been waiting, right? So like, let's say, um, Actually, my, my, my slides afterwards will illustrate this point, but uh, basically there, there are a couple of big issues with this, with this approach and it's not gonna perform well, especially if you have lots of users um, using your service, right? So the shape of the perfect solution, whatever it might be, uh, should balance the prioritization of long waiting callers with the value of exact matches for new callers, right? So sometimes maybe you wanna steal a caller that just came in even though it matches someone else perfectly because you want to match it with someone who's been waiting for a long time, right? So it's kind of this thing where it's, it's no longer clear, right? So here's some trick questions that illustrate that point a little better, right? So you have two level seven users who match instantly um, at the expense of a level nine user who's been waiting a while and may not see a close match ever or soon, you know, but they might, maybe they'll hang up the phone before they get there because they've been on for a long time, right? Um, or you have the, the, the level nine steal one of the seven, the level seven newcomers uh, leaving one of the other level seven user to wait, but also causing a mismatch in skill between the, the level nine and the level seven and an uncertain future for the remaining level seven. So it's like, what, which is better here? And the trick answer is that it's not clear at all, right? I, I have no idea. Maybe you could run simulations and try to, to measure how, how good these strategies work, right? But there's no way to, for me to reason through it, right? Um, so I came up with kind of a, a, what I think is a good compromise. So you essentially, this is the implementation on, the, on this side. It's, it's quite long and a little bit hairy, but just a, in, on an abstract level, um, it basically you group people into bins 
within each bin, you sort by wait duration. So the people at the top have been waiting the longest within that skill level, right? And then for each bin, you attempt to pop off many, as many pairs of users as you can. And because you can only either have an even or an odd number, you, at the end, you end up with bins that either have one person in it or zero people in it. And then based on how long a user has been waiting, you can relax the matching criteria, right? So at first, you need to have an exact match with the skill level, and then later on, you can have plus or minus one, and then if you've waited a certain amount of time, I think it's 90 seconds, you can match with all skill levels, right? And so you will match with anyone who's available. And this seems to work pretty well. Well, I hope. And it also runs in the end log end, which is nice. So. Uh, the big question is, is this a good algorithm? Is this a good product? I don't know yet. Um, I only own one phone and I only have one Google Voice account, and so I can only test it with two phone numbers calling in, which is the bare minimum needed to test that it works at all, right? And so I'd like you guys to tell me, this is the phone number, this is the way it works. If you call that number right now, you'll be matched with each other. And I'd like to see how this works, and I'll pull up the logs on the server. I really want you guys to do this. There's no, there's no hidden charges, there's no, nothing, nothing going on. I, I, uh, here we go, okay, yeah, I got it all hooked up. So yeah, we'll see as people begin to call in, hopefully. Oh, I'm sorry about that, you're right. 224-545-5222. Uh, all right, so we have a couple of people calling in. Uh, you enter in your, uh, you enter it in as it, it guides you through um, when you're talking on the phone, right? There's a, there's a, a keypad and you, and you type in your answer. So yeah, I've got a, a seven, a five. Of course, these are all anonymous. So hopefully people are being paired up. Uh, it looks like it. It seems so. That as, as 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 people drop out, I mean, maybe you could say hi. See if you if if you've uh, been put on hold. You hear hold music, and then you hear silence. That means you're talking to a person, right? Um, so yeah, as as it grows and shrinks, it means more people are calling in, and then more people have been paired with other people, and they're and they're uh, kicked out, right? So. Um, so that's good. We got a pair over here. Hopefully, it works for everyone. I it. I mean, I wrote this last night, so it, it'll probably break at some point, in some way. Um, but uh, it's exciting to test it on stage. Um, and uh, yeah, that, I think that's, uh, that's all I have to share. Um, hopefully you, uh, hopefully you, can, you can relieve your technical stress with uh, Tech Buddy in the future. Okay, do we have any questions for Will, please? Okay. No, no, not yet. Let me get there. Okay. So, so good, good work uh, and entertaining too. So your matching algorithm is just number to number or are you uh, thinking of more? Right. Um, well, I mean, we could do something more sophisticated, right? Uh, I, this is just for a hackathon. You could imagine, so right now, just to clarify, yes. Uh, the only thing that is the matching criteria is, that, is the number, right? That's the only thing you compare between two people, but you also are conscious of the fact that some people have waited longer. So you record the time that they, initially in the call is initialized, and then sometime in the future you can measure what's the time now, and you can see how long they've waited, you know? Um, but right, like you could imagine maybe I'd want to match people up geographically so that maybe they could hang out if they like each other or something, right? You could, you could select for that. Or maybe you could say, <laughs> maybe you could say I'm only interested in like, I'm only interested in this type of engineer or I'm only interested in someone who has experience with this framework or something, right? But the, the limited way that you can interact with the system through the keypad kind of makes that a little difficult, right? Um, but it's certainly a possibility for the future. Uh, what language did you put this in? Did you do this in? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I totally forgot to talk about that in the slides. You're right. Um, so, uh, this is built on uh, Node.js, uh, and it's basically like a simple web server that just responds to um, requests. Um, I like Node.js because I can write in JavaScript, and it it's fairly performant for um, something that's so flexible and so easy to, to quickly you know, create something. If I had tried to write this in any other language, in my estimation, I wouldn't have been able to write it in time for the hackathon, and I definitely wouldn't have something to show here, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Node.js is a, is a, it's a runtime engine that you, you write JavaScript and then it gives you the capabilities to run a server that's controlled by that JavaScript, right? Okay, and this will be the, okay. Final question, I'm afraid, because we need to. Uh, this is that. This is the project that we were working on at the hackathon that you didn't have time to finish. You're using yeah. the API from days. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is, so did you end up uh, using that same API? You had to do something else because right. the one they had on the, um, was I guess wasn't supported at the time. You sort of went down a rabbit hole on that. So, yeah. So tell me what happened from there. Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was a little bit frustrated because at the hackathon I had discovered some, as far as I understand it, maybe I'm incorrect, but I, I had discovered some uh, functionality that was documented but not implemented. So I, you can send stuff to this URL, but then nothing happens, and that was like my whole thing depended on. So then it broke on stage, right? So that was a, a very it was a tragic experience, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, then I went home and I was like, okay, well, how would I do this without that endpoint? It, it be, you have to change the entire thing, and so you just rebuild the whole thing. But um, now it's kind of more like idiomatic uh, structure, right? Because I was coming out, I was kind of trying to like put it, put put the, the square peg in the round hole of like how I would imagine it works, right? But then I don't really um, look at how these applications are usually structured using this sort of technology, right? Um, and now I think it's more stable because of it, and now it actually works. So, <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah, I used the API days um, of uh, VoIP innovations, right? Voice over IP innovations. Yeah, that's that's the API that I used. Um, I, I think you could use many APIs that do something similar to this, but that's that's what I happened to use. They were at the uh, event, and it was uh, it works it works really well. It's super stable. Um, the audio quality is good. So if you if you're interested in sort of that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing, you know. I would check them out. Excellent. Because of the sake of time, again, I'll just have to cut the questions here. Yeah. But again, well, well done. A round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of those services where I could imagine some other people in the room using it. Moving on to ScanDrop, guys, if you could get yourselves set up. I assume you want the mic, given how you like to wander around. Ooh, that's going to be hard to follow up. That was a really good presentation, my dude. All right. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. It's there in there. So we got this. Wait. So, okay. I guess. Yeah, you can stand me by there. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, guys. We are Scam Drop. So our main goal or our business uh, that we built at this hackathon was to help uh, businesses with a large call volume, to help them prevent frauds, make their operations more efficient, and have them uh, help them grow their business in a more sustainable and profitable way. With that, let's get into the meat of it. We're going to introduce, all right, so this is our problem statement. So fraud prediction and dropping is really important for call centers and large call volume businesses these days, especially with the number of scams going around with both incoming and outgoing calls. So that is a major reason why large corporations lose a lot of money on their day-to-day -day operations, especially when you take a look at it like Amazon. On a day-to-day -day basis, they have so many customer service calls that uh, like, you know, it's hard for the customer service reps to identify which ones are fraudulent and which ones are genuine. And what they do most of the time is they just end up like replacing it as long as it's within a given set volume, uh, like $100 or $200, they just send the refunds and that makes the business lose a lot of money over time. Now, when you can also take a look at it from the, another uh, corporation perspective, like the banks, when they make these collection calls to a lot of these places, sometimes these calls get routed to known fraudulent numbers or uh, like a suspicious numbers, but the call center employees are not aware of the aware of that. So hence, they end up wasting a lot of time making these really expensive calls that makes the business spend all their budget on these incoming and outgoing calls, and hence, again, leading to loss of time, loss of efficiency, and most importantly, loss in profits. With that, I'm used to entering this. Okay, <laughs> as a basic uh, idea, so from 2015 to 2016, there was a 113% increase in call center fraud. VoIP methods, 
we found out were 45% of these fraudulent calls. That's why we're here to help solve that issue. Now. All right, so uh, the way we're doing, uh, so basically we're trying to prevent fraud and we do that by uh, real time tracking. We're, we're uh, optimizing and, and analyzing the calls in real time. Um, we do that based on uh, looking at the destination uh, as one of the factors, the destination of where a call is going and where it's uh, coming from. Um, so we're predicting the, uh, and we're predicting with that. And also uh, after a call is dropped, we do have a post call recovery system that uh, we plan to implement so that um, a call can be recovered afterwards. So uh, the type of data analysis that we're doing is we actually have a machine learning model in the back end that uh, looks at the past data and attempts to figure out which call should be dropped. Uh, the machine learning model, we're actually using a decision tree uh, classifier. So I'm gonna quickly show you the demonstration. So uh, here we go. So here's our, uh, our front end. You can essentially think of it as uh, like an admin panel for uh, the current calls. So this chart would represent um, the calls that are being dropped, the calls that have been dropped. And these are some statistics that well, we would show. But um, the main part is over here. So what we have is uh, we use Simwood's API. And basically we have a, uh, a node where when, you, uh, when a phone call is made to the call center, uh, it'll show up over here. So in the demonstration, what you'll see is I'll call the number. It'll come up over here as an incoming and then outgoing to uh, pose number. So um, I'll quickly show you really quick. And uh, what'll happen here is for demonstration purposes, we just had it set up to drop the call after five seconds, but uh, that, uh, it, would, it would ideally uh, actually look at the, uh, the data. So here we go. So you can see right now, the call showed up right there. Now he's answered it. Five seconds should elapse and it should drop it immediately. Right, and, you can <laughs> and you can see at the very top uh, with the timestamp, it is that call. And uh, we also can drop the call manually from the panel. Okay, so this time don't answer immediately. Okay, go ahead and answer. And there it is. It went almost immediately and uh, happens in real time. So uh, what we use is uh, our backend is written using Node.js. Actually, uh, uh, we use Express.js, which is um, a module from Node. And uh, also, uh, what happens when we receive a incoming call, we take it to another backend written in Python, where, it, where we can actually use the machine learning model, because uh, it's much easier in Python to uh, work with the, uh, the algorithms, the data, uh, machine learning algorithms. Um, another problem that I wanted to just talk about was that um, there are times when call centers are compromised uh, in which uh, uh, the call center, like maybe some hacker has control of it and they wanna send lots of outgoing phone calls to uh, you know, expensive destinations or whatever it be. So this is a, a great solution to that problem. Okay, we're gonna continue on with the presentation. Oh, okay. All right, now that we've seen the tech behind all of this, let me just take you through a little use case scenario in a real life example. So let's say in this scenario, I'm playing the role of a call center employee at Chase Bank. I, uh, my role is to both do incoming calls and outgoing calls. And in this scenario, I found out like, I get a call one fine day and uh, this customer keeps giving me inconsistent information but as a customer service employee, I have a feeling that this is a fraudulent call and this is wasting my time. But most of the times, most customers, as most customer service agents are trained to do, we go along with this, with these calls to waste like around five, 10, 15 minutes of time at the end, transferring it to another department that will then determine again whether it's a fraud or not. But with this, with the help of scam drop, the system, uh, the backend system will be able to determine the early factors 
and would give me a display saying, hey, this this like uh, the number is from a very suspicious area. The number belongs to a known scam database. Maybe you want to drop this call and move on. Then that would immediately help me make a faster decision, thereby optimizing my performance and the business's performance over the period of time. Now again, let's look at a second case scenario where I have to make calls to customers. And I have to call them up, I have to ask them, update them on their daily bank, bank statements, or like I have to call them on their pending loan payments and loan uh, situation. At that time, it is as a customer service agent, the only numbers that I will have access to are the ones the customers have provided. In this case, when I'm making a call, and the call uh, has been forwarded to another number, in that case, it'll be hard for me to know whether this is a call that is real or not, simply because there, is, there could be other third party involvements in that scenario after the call has been placed. So with the help of ScamDrop, since ScamDrop will be working and analyzing and pulling data from the call in real time, if the call is rerouted to another number or another destination, ScamDrop will immediately check through known databases and identify known factors of fraudulent calls or when these calls are too expensive. And then it would alert me so that I'd be able to drop it and move on to a more optimal call to help customers and serve the business in a better way. So those are two use cases. Now with that, I'd like to introduce my team without which this project would be impossible to bring up. Of course, Mike, Michael, our developer, senior developer in charge, Rebecca, was the one who helped put together the, the tables, end. the back end. Yuri and uh, Kim, who helped put together the front end. Yes. And of course, my team that helped me with this pitch, Madly, Noel, and of course, myself. <laughs> All right, with that, thank you guys, and let's go on to our, so, yes. that's thank us. You. So are there any other questions? Yep, just hang on a sec. Tom. Yeah, just speak on that. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. Uh, what's the, the features that you use to train your model? So mainly, um, we are looking at the call duration, the charge, time, uh, the charge amount. So if a, a call is expensive, we look at how much the call, the call is costing, and the destination. So typically, when you're looking at uh, the past calls in a, um, from a call center, they will be, you know, uh, a lot of them in a similar area, or uh, we also look at the frequency. So one of the features is frequency of the, uh, of the calls. So all those features are looked at when we, um, when we train the model. Uh, yeah, do you, like, examine performance, like, false positive, false negative? Can you repeat the question? Uh, do you examine the, the performance of the detection, like false positive and the false negative? So the re we, we were un unable to do that because we didn't have a real data set to oh, work sure. with no since uh, we don't have a call center's data. So what we uh -huh. did was we generated uh, a data set. One of our, um, actually, Rebecca generated a, a data set so that we could train our model on. So it's, it's flawed, but if we, had, we were given a real data set, we could check that. Cool, cool. Thank you. Also, just to add that if any if anyone of you will be willing to sponsor us and get us the real call center data, maybe we can help you guys stop scams too. <laughs> Excellent. Next, next uh, question, a call okay. from, uh, question from the genius. Uh, my, sorry, you, someone else can ask. My, my question was answered. My question was, uh, how did, where, what was the data set? Where did you guys get the data set to train the model, right? Yes. But he's uh, answered. And we've got a question here at the front, Tom. No, just hang a sec so they can hear you on the live stream. Sorry. So when can I get this on my phone for robocalls? <laughs> so, oh, robocalls? Well, of course, uh, there are two ways to do it. One, you can fund us to help us build this. <laughs> and the second one is once we've actually built it, you can pay $5 to download ScamDrop on your phone to do it. Excellent. Again, thank you so much, guys. Well done. Thank you. <clears throat> Now, just a quick check. Do we have any other of the Chicago winners here that want to do a pitch? If not, what I'd like to do is Simon. Simon, this is his first time sponsoring Tad Hack Global. So maybe you could say just a few words while I get set up about your experiences. 
Hi, folks. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a bit ad hoc and, and, and unscripted, but um, I, I'm from Simwood, and this was our first year as, as global sponsor of, of TADHAC. Um, I'm here in Chicago, which I gather is where, where the sponsors hang out, but uh, we had guys in Johannesburg, Berlin, and London as well. So to, to call it a baptism of fire would be a bit of, a, bit of an understatement. Um, the locusts began descending on kind of Friday night, um, ripping our API to pieces and having extensive feature requests. Um, but that really gathered a pace when uh, London and Johannesburg woke up Saturday morning. So two of my guys on the ground in, in Joburg pulled 38 hours straight and then went for a beer. Um, so I was kind of, kind of proud of them. Um, but it was so, so useful for us to um, get a level of um, user testing of the product that you would wait years to get in the, in the real world. Having hundreds of people that know where they want to go, but are brand new to your service offering and your API um, is really, really useful. Because most normal customers are familiar with what you do, and they can navigate their way around some of your, your eccentricities. We're really, really impressed by um, well, A, the volume of hacks that, that we're using Simwood, that was, that was gratifying, um, but also some of the really cool, cool things that they did. Um, Scamdrop was, was heavily, heavily Simwood. We, we love that over here in, in Chicago. The, the global winner was actually the, the Berlin solution, um, where they listened to, to everything I'd said in the, um, the video pitch about uh, I wanted something that enhanced end user privacy and security, and they, they built something that enhanced end user privacy and, privacy and security with a, a two-way calling and messaging capability where neither, neither party knew each other's real number and either party could kind of kill the relationship just in, it, just in a sim, single, simple text message. Um, so that was, that was really, really cool. But all of them were really impressive considering the time that they had to, to invest in, the, in the, their hacks and, and their familiarity with us out the door. So well done and thank you to everyone and well done and thank you to, to Alan for, for having us. Is that enough? Is that getting oh, that's going? Fine. That is perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Simon. So we're going to show one more hack from Chicago. It's the high school team uh, U10s. Now, they really did want to come. Unfortunately, they prioritized their SATs tomorrow above us. I'm sorry. But, you know, I, I do understand it. You know, they were like on the fence, but then they've got home and I think the parents told them no. <laughs> so, what we're gonna see is a, a quick video of their pitch. The audio is a bit low, so just you know, try to be quiet and I'll turn up the volume over there as well. Uh, but again, a, a group of high school students that put together something that ended up being the uh, Senate Mobile uh, winner because uh, they built this hack on their e CPAS capabilities. Uh, so, again, well done, guys. Hi, I'm Papa, I'm Brian, I'm Michelle, I'm Jay. And our app is UTEC. By utilizing Simple's SMS API for client to client messaging, voice and Ensure a safe client to client connection and set a mobile for recommendations to code. We have created an app that fully integrates these parts into a cohesive dialogue. Our inspiration for the app came from one of our English teachers in past years, Mr. Weaver. Last year, during an assembly, Mr. Weaver talked about how help was so important and how his negligence almost led him to die in a fatal crash. We took this advice and ran with the idea of promoting physical uh, health and diet. The main feature of our app stems from taking a picture of food using the Clarify API, and we will try to guess what the food is based on the picture. And then it will confirm, confirm, uh, confirm with the user whether the food is indeed what the API file is. Once the user has confirmed what the food is, we will present the nutrition facts for one serving test of that food using the NutritionX API, which is stored in Firefox. Using these nutritional facts, we also managed to incorporate another feature called the U10 score. In our app, the U10 score allows for the user to see how healthy his or her diet currently is. To calculate the score, we use an algorithm that puts the essential parts of a diet, such as the fat, soy, carbs, protein, and calories, 
and reference that to the recommended daily input. This user score is very low because there's only one proof in the database and it's not representative of a day's worth of eating. But ju uh, just imagine if this was a day's worth of eating. A score this low would correspond to a very unhealthy diet. A score from 60 to 75 would be moderately unhealthy. Uh, 75 to 90 would be moderately healthy, and 90 to 100 would be a very healthy diet. By utilizing the user score, we not only allow for the user to see how healthy his or her diet is, but also allow for the user to plan his or her next step in the diet. Along with dieting and keeping up, we also had another goal in mind to connect people together. The list you see here is determined based on your food interests. Our matching algorithm takes your food interests and matches it with users that have similar food interests. Along with the matching algorithm, Telsat's score feature was also used to weed out matches that help sustain connection safety. Once the user signs up, the phone number will be run through the Telsat test to get a corresponding score. If their number of validates the user to be unsafe, then UTENS will not allow them to communicate with other people. Finally, to start the interaction with, between users, we use Simulance API SMS feature, enabling the sending of an interest message from one user to the other with a click of a button. Along with, uh, along with uh, our ideas of connecting with health, we have a feature that recommends users certain restaurants and recipes. We use Spoon Actor, Spoon, we use uh, an API called Spoon Actor, and uh, it, it purchases through our database, and it will recommend our users with uh, restaurants and recipes. We also use this feature to also uh, link uh, our users and other intent users. So uh, as you can see, um, in our second slide over here. And this is Sanon Mobile. We were going to we use our feature to um, use our feature to uh, link use our feature to uh, contact the server and uh, through a recommendation system. The user can also request for changes and the user can request an app for changes um, using this feature. And also our main SMS feature, our main Communication feature is voice SMS API. And whatever, for example, a uh, user's UTEN score changes or uh, they're recommended a new user uh, through our connections, um, as, uh, VoIP will send them an SMS and they will notify them of these changes. Through Simplex uh, SMS API, we managed to connect to use user to user messaging through uh, VoIP, uh, VoIP innovation. We did server to client messaging. Uh, using Telesign score, we ensured safety between connections, and uh, Ted and Mobile, we created a recommendation. And thanks to Mr. Weaver's speech, we find that we truly recognize the importance of healthy living and diet. Thank you. Okay, before it plays on to the next one. There we go. Okay, and remember, high school kids. So uh, that was excellent uh, from them, uh, but unfortunately, SATs got in the way. So let me just uh, now open up. I don't know where to put. Oh, here it is. So let me give you just a few minutes of the uh, big picture of everything that took place. With Tadak Global, and then we'll uh, wrap up with uh, another pitch from uh, Belgrade, which was a new location for this year. So, this will just run through the winners. Uh, of course, uh, we must. Oh, it helps when you turn the flicker on. There we go. So, got to thank the sponsors for making this possible. So, that's Simwood, Telesign, VoIP Innovations, and their CPAS. Apides, but that's not all. There's all our partners around the world that are running locations and helping us promote what they're doing. Of course, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Real-Time Communications Lab, uh, that's Carol, uh, Cluster Creatic, uh, who run Popping Up for many years now, and of course, MTN over in South Africa, which was by far our biggest location. What makes TADAC different, it's diversity. 
This isn't a group of open source geeks getting together and talking about how great they are and how great their platforms are and how the world doesn't understand them, okay? This is a whole group of people getting out there and playing around, knocking the tires. It's that diversity that creates the solutions that become commercially viable. It's open, we don't care. I mean, telecoms is our root, but we've had uh, Status, which is an Ethereum OS, is one of the sponsors, and that's complex. That's not an easy hack at all. And we had some really impressive uh, hacks created. We had Carrefour. They just provided a data set and basically said to uh, you know, uh, the, the hackers, knock yourself out, do whatever you like on top of that. So again, we try to bring as many different sponsors together we can. But of course, telecoms, because it's fundamental to the human condition, and of course, is the most important technology known to mankind for everybody in this room. And it's challenging. Because we don't say, most of the Bay Area uh, brands go, you know, they have a hackathon and here's the test. You know, it's a challenge. It's not really a challenge. It's basically follow these steps, use our API. Woohoo! You know, that's great, but it's not really changing the world. It's not doing something that's inspiring people. What we do is we ask people to think about problems in their communities, in their home, in their work life, and look at how these technologies can help solve those problems. We've had tens of companies founded, hundreds of people have been able to use the hacks to help them get great jobs. For some, they're dream jobs. So again, it's hard at TadHack, but it really does make a difference. And here from day one is some of the pictures. As you can see, we had some uh, middle schoolers taking part. And then we have day two, and just a shout out to Alicia, who runs our South African location. Then by the numbers, we had actually 580 hackers around the world taking part. 85 hacks created, but of course in some locations, they have too many hacks to be able to do judging, so they have to go through several rounds of down selection. We ended up with about 50 hacks uh, being recorded and over 130 hours of YouTube video created. And we did stress the new live streaming service, that's for certain. So let me quickly run through some of the winners. So Belgrade was a new location for us, so thanks to Telesign for running that. You're going to hear from these guys at the end when I've done my little uh, spiel on uh, TEDx Global, so we'll finish off uh, on their pitch. But there were uh, several winners there. In Berlin, of course, they have to be drinking beer and eating sausage. <laughs> Here's the Berlin team giving their pitch. It was only one team. Okay, so TEDx has big locations, we have small locations, but guess what? You know, the quality in some of the small locations is quite amazing. And a shout out to VO Networks and Automat for all their hard work in running that location. And you'll be, can, Automat are actually, uh, Automat Berlin, are running a uh, session at TAD Summit EMEA in London in November on the 19th and 20th. On to the Chicago winners. You've heard from Scandrop. So congratulations there with, of course, Carol and Warren, who make Tad Hack Chicago possible. Uh, then, of course, the uh, Senate Mobile winners, because they were a lo local sponsor for Tad Hack Chicago. So thanks to Senate Mobile. And of course, there you go. They're watching one of the live streams. We really made a point this year of enforcing all locations run live streams, and it really creates a very community uh, feel when you're busy hacking or you're coming in in the morning uh, on Sunday morning, and it's tough. You know, it's 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and you know, people are hacking, but you're seeing all the stuff that's going on in Johannesburg or Belgrade or in Berlin to motivate you to get you know, going. And here are some of the pictures from Johannesburg. They had nearly 250 people involved. There's the winners uh, for uh, TEDx Johannesburg, but they have local sponsors as well. So it's a federated model we use for TEDx. And you can see all the local sponsors, uh, sorry, all the local winners there. They even had a, a prize for the most active tweeter. And yes, she definitely was. Uh, so. Uh, Again, okay, it's a great environment and a great vibe from South Africa. Year on year, they've been uh, you know, great. And just a shout out to Simwood for sending somebody down there. It's always been one of my sort of you know, guilts in not physically being down there. I was trying to get down there this year, but just the cost of the ticket and the timing meant that uh, doing that and getting back here to uh, run uh, TED Summit Americas would just be too tight. 
London has been a location we've had for many years. And again, some great hacks that came out of there. Uh, and again, Simwood was well represented because they had somebody there at the event. And a shout out to uh, Rob and Niall and uh, Idea London for providing the facilities. Papaya, always a great location, producing great quality hacks on Simwood, Telesign, and uh, also there was a couple of hacks there on VoIP Innovations. Cluster Creatic really acts as a hub across the whole of the region, uh, but uh, great quality hacks. Same with the Netherlands. Uh, we had a couple of really good ones. Uh, Automaton won the VoIP Innovations uh, Global Prize, so well done there. And uh, Diana did a really sweet little hack. Uh, and just again, thanks to KPN, Speak Up, and Appiology for uh, all their hard work in making that location. Quickly, onto the global winners. Uh, VoIP Innovations, as I mentioned, awarded the global prize. So the way we do it is a two-phase model. Locations have the winners at the end on the Sunday, okay? Which is, you know, you've hacked away, you wanna know, you know, there's gotta be some winners here. But then all the hacks get rounded up and then basically I'm hassling, emailing, cajoling the global sponsors to get their judging done. And of course, they're distributed over a whole host of time zones. They've done 38, 39, 40 hours straight, and we're still hassling them to give us information. But we got there uh, so that we can, as soon as possible, on the Monday, announce these global winners. So uh, you'll see Automaton. Uh, we also, uh, the U10s guys, also got a, a prize, which was nice. And Tech Buddy, they didn't win on the uh, on Sunday, but they did win on Monday. So now, well, you know where, who De, De Chen is now. So you can speak. <laughs> There's no longer Where's Waldo. Uh, moving on to the Telesign winners. So uh, again, you know, Inbus was a great hack. They recognized the work at Papaya, which was, I think was spot on. And this is a geek's geeky hack, okay? So this is Fight Fantasy by Steve Goodwin, which is an interactive fiction by SMS. You have to see the pitch, but it really is a geeky geeks hack. And wrapping up on Simwood, of course, uh, Simon already mentioned the Berlin guys got a prize. They managed to, uh, these guys didn't get through to the final, but they built up something that was quite impressive uh, using uh, Simwood's technology. So they were able to uh, uh, you know, recognize that because they had people on the ground. And then Who Calls Me is great. Uh, Steve and Lily built up a, uh, a node library for the Simwood API, which a lot of teams built on top of. So again, great to see that. And uh, finally, um, so, well, Matt and Yinyi, husband and wife. In fact, we've had quite a few um, you know, couples that have come in and through ha Tad Hack have ended up marrying. Uh, I guess if you can survive a hackathon without strangling each other, well, maybe there's something there. So, uh, but again, they did an excellent hack and got recognition from Simwood. So that's it. Thank you to everybody who took part, and we'll see you again in October 2020. And I hope some of the people here in the audience can be global sponsors for Tadac Global 2020. Now, let me just wrap up with. Okay, let me just disconnect this. Well, my laptop gets its knickers out of a twist. And I will play the Inbus hack to wrap things up. Yeah, that's why. I closed it down, that's why. So just bear with me a minute. There you go, Belgrade pictures. Stop. There you go. I'm not going to play all of this because of time, but I just wanted to wrap up with uh, what uh, they achieved in Belgrade, which is the first time they'd run a uh, TAD hack in that location, which was great.
<laughs> okay, hello everyone. Uh, our team name is uh, Machers and uh, his name is Stefan, his name is Luca and my name is Angelka. So, uh, yeah, once upon a time, uh, one of us uh, was coming back from a holiday and you know when you're in a bus and uh, you fall asleep, for example, and you're coming back from a holiday and uh, you don't you don't know where you are and you want to just uh, send the sms to your parents to pick you up when you come back from holiday and uh, you can skip uh, or you know just pass your end vacation because you fall asleep and you didn't send that sms message or for example imagine yourself in a crowded bus just standing like that and you cannot move your hands and you cannot pick your phone and SMS your friend and tell them uh, that you're near near that friend or that you're near your end location. So it would be awesome that your phone can locate yourself where you are and send that and trigger that uh, service and send an SMS to the person that you want to send it. Or for example, uh, you have a kid or you're a kid <laughs> yourself and you're on an excursion and you just you know listening to the music in the bus just uh, coming back from the from the excursion during the night and your parents don't know uh, where you are and you want to text them and tell them where you are and uh, how far away you are from them so they can pick you up for example or just so they can know where you are so we just uh, wanted to implement something that is simple for using uh, that is just uh, on uh, like two you have two buttons it's simple it's uh, it's not so uh, hard to implement and it can be useful on a daily basis so we just uh, decided to use android studio of course it can be done also for uh, for apple products or ios uh, we use the telesign api for sms for texting and we use Google Maps API for locating yourself using your uh, ho phone location in real time and we use Java. So our app is based so you can you can just uh, use your app to put the phone number of the person that you want to text. That's the first thing. The second th thing is to insert your message and uh, the third thing is to decide <coughs> whether you, you want to use kilometers or minutes. Uh, for your uh, parameter. So what is that parameter? Uh, so for example, if you know that you want to text your father to come and pick you up if you are in a radius, uh, for example, three kilometers near to your parents, you can just put, uh, if I am three kilometers far away from my parents, just uh, send my parent a message so they can come and pick you up. So that's the first. Uh, so that's the first uh, first uh, option to use in this app. So it's a kilometers based uh, uh, thing. Uh, or, on the other hand, if you don't want to think about, uh, oh, maybe my my my, my uh, father is working, so his job is uh, I don't know five kilometers uh, from my uh, uh, picking point, and then I need to think uh, how far away I need to trigger that SMS, so you, you, do, you just don't want to think and uh, make an approximation by your head, you just want to say, uh, pick me up if I'm 50 minutes near you. So if I'm 50 minutes far away from my friend or my dad or my parents, just uh, send them a message so they can pick you up. So you don't want to think about uh, how, how, how far away you are, you just want to say okay 50 minutes is a, is, a, is a time approximation so in the background our app can take uh, your so just for the sake of time and to tease you you can watch the rest of it on the tadak youtube channel just go to tadak.com in the top right hand corner you can watch basically the hundreds we're getting close to a thousand hacks that have been created since 2014. so thanks so much for your time for seeing what we've been getting up to over this weekend. Bear in mind, this is just one weekend. 50 hacks that were created. We've got, if you believe in programmable telecoms, we've got to get the message out to a damn sight more people than us. And ideally, younger people than us. If we want to basically, uh, you know, take advantage of the platforms and capabilities we're putting together. So that's what this is all about. So again, thank you so much. And on to your next sessions.